Hi. Um, so, did you know that the most beautiful thing in the entire universe are mathematical equations? So, I was told once that you should always try alienate as much of the audience as you possibly can as soon as you stand on stage. So, hopefully that's done that. <laughs> so, now I'll spend the next 15 or so minutes trying to get people actually back on side. This could be an uphill battle, but bear with us. We'll see what we can do. So, I'm going to tell you basically give you some stories about where I'm coming with this and what events in my own history led me to come to this belief, basically. So I'll walk you through and let's hope that by the end of it you don't think I'm completely insane, merely mildly insane. <laughs> right, so first of all, when I was 16 years old, I came across a book. I was going through my father's library at the time or something and clearly was more bored than normal. And I came across a book on chaos theory. So I started flicking through this and it had some equations in there and some computer programs that you could write yourself. And at that time I was quite interested in these, so I started playing with it and saw that there were some really pretty pictures. So this particular one here is the Mandelbrot set. So it's an example of a fractal. Now what a fractal is, is that you zoom in on it on every single point, more and more, closer and closer, and you get detail at every single level. And no matter how far you zoom in, you get more detail, more complexity. This is already cool just for its pure aesthetics. But what was even cooler for me was that all of this comes from a single equation. A very simple equation, you can see on the screen there. And that gives rise to all of this complexity. I won't go into the details of that, but that just sort of blew me away, actually. It just seemed so strange. So this went into the back of my mind. It sort of influenced my progression, if you like, for the next years. So one thing led to another, and I ended up doing a PhD in astrophysics. There were a couple of steps missing in that description, I suspect, but <laughs> these things happen. <laughs> so, interestingly enough, it wasn't just me that had this type of experience, actually. So, it turns out that the ascetic beauty that we perceive as humans, and the beauty, if you like, in an equation, if you see it as a mathematician, in other words, if you sort of understand what the equations mean, what it actually, how it fits together, it's exactly the same part of the brain that's actually registered in this. So it's a part of the frontal lobe from memory, and this was research done by neuroscientists in the UK last year. And they found that it's exactly the same place activated in mathematicians when they look at an equation, and it's anybody when you just look at a beautiful sunset, for example. So that's kind of cool. It's exactly the same thing. You just need to have a little bit of training to appreciate the actual beauty and the simplicity of the equations. So I did the PhD in astrophysics, and Extremely lucky for me, um, Hubble Space Telescope had preceded me. What that meant was that while I was going through the PhD and procrastinating like there was no tomorrow, so basically I managed to stretch something that should be a few years into, you know, five. This happened. So, so during that time, I saw a lot of these pictures, a lot of star-forming regions, and the, aside from their aesthetic beauty, they've actually got something in common with fractals. So you take a se section, zoom in, and you see it's just as complex. You take another section, zoom in, and here you can see all this complexity. This particular cloud is uh, called the Carina Nebula. It's about 7,000 light years from the Earth. For comparison, it's eight light minutes to the sun. In other words, if the sun were to suddenly explode, like, I don't know, a doomsday bomb goes off. I've been working on a few, but I haven't got any work yet, so you're okay at the moment. But say we just black out the sun. It would take eight minutes for us to notice on the Earth, right? Then we'd be in a bit of trouble. But that's another point. So this is 7,000 light years away. In other words, if one of these stars were to explode right now, it would take 7,000 years for us to see it. So the size of these is just immense. And you've got light years and light years across. Each of these little dots here is a star, and they all conspire together to sculpt this entire thing out. So you've got this beautiful fractal structure, and also it's guided by relatively simple physics in this case. So very simple equations. These are just hydrodynamics, exactly the same equations that we use when we're designing an aircraft, for example. Exactly the same equations govern the movement of air over the plane's wings to actually provide lift. All the same stuff. Same as the weather patterns, everything. It's all the same simple equations, and you can get these enormous complexities. So here we have another region, just in the corner there. Zoom in, and then we can see a tiny little bit there, and again, you get this what looks like a seahorse over here, but this enormous complexity everywhere and great deal of beauty. So I looked at more and more of these pictures and I actually became inspired. And another thing that I'd been playing with when I was an early teenager, 
about 13 or so, was that I started to do a bit of oil painting. So I decided, I mean, at some point during my PhD, to combine these two things together, basically. To take my own passion for space, for the aesthetic beauty that you see, and to combine it with my passion for art. So here's one of the examples that I actually did. So the nebulae sort of suit my style of painting for two reasons. One, I am passionate about it. And two, if you sort of, if you muck up somebody's face, people notice. If you muck up a star cluster, who notices? <laughs> so it suits my own lack of skill, so, which is quite useful there. <laughs> hey, when it's a hobby, you can't be that good at it, sadly. So just to remind you, we've got the fractals on all scales in this. So you've got this enormous star clusters. You keep zooming in, and it's more and more detail at each level. It's only limited by a telescope technology, in fact. But how far can we push this analogy? How far can we take a simple set of equations and extrapolate enormous complexity from that? Well, it turns out you can do it for the entire universe. So why think small where you can just take the entire universe in your stride? So what we have here is a picture of the earliest picture we have of the universe, in fact. So this is the cosmic microwave background radiation. This is literally the afterglow from the Big Bang itself. So this picture was, well, the photons from this, the bits of light from this, left the original explosion about 13.7 billion years ago. And it was pretty hot back then. So everything in the same was roughly the same temperature, and it's been slowly cooling. So when we observe it now, it's only about three degrees above absolute zero. And this map here gives you the variation in temperature. So this gives you a small difference across the entire universe. It's about 0.1% difference between each of these pixels here, you see. And this is from the Planck telescope from a while ago, Planck um, space telescope. So what do you get? The set of initial conditions, you get this variation across there. And then you have a very simple, trust me, this isn't so bad, uh, set of equations that actually govern how this will evolve. This is actually Einstein's general relativity. The fact that I can fit this on a screen is what I want to show you, basically. This is kind of cool. This has everything, literally everything. On the left-hand side, all of space and time. Every single thing in the universe. And on the right-hand side, all the contents of the universe. Energy and matter. All the stuff we are made of. Every bit of hydrogen, every bit of helium, every bit of carbon, all the things that make up our bodies, everything, is all on this right-hand side of the equation. So you take this initial temperature map, you take these equations, and what we do as scientists is we run them through very large computers. So this is an example of that. It's a simulation, and what happens is you start getting the temperature variations causes density fluctuations, and then they sort of collapse together. So you end up with this huge complexity in there again. This is just over time, you get this complexity emerging. And you end up with this. It's like a web, basically, of matter going through. Each one of those dots, whoops, that was the wrong button. <laughs> Each one of those dots is like a cluster of galaxies, usually, like one or two galaxies, for example. The denser the cluster's there, the more galaxies you can compress into it. And this is all well and good for theory, right? This is just numerical simulation so far. But what about the real world? What about the universe? This is actually a picture of our place in the entire universe. This is our, well, we are here. We are one of these tiny, tiny little dots in this. And you have this complexity going in every direction, well, in 3D, in fact. This entire thing is a supercluster of galaxies. It's called Lenia Kea, which is Hawaiian for immense heaven. Right, this was their discovery last year, I believe. And this actually shows all the, the bound bits along here, or all the galaxies that are actually close to each other and interacting in a close way. Each of those dots is a galaxy. Now, this might be more familiar to you from this picture here. So this is a picture taken from the Hubble Space Telescope again. And this is cool. When I remember showing this to my grandparents once, actually, and they were blown away, basically because of what it actually is. So imagine, you take your thumb, and you put it up like that. That's roughly the diameter of the moon, is your thumb, right? if you hold it out at maximum distance. A tenth of that, tiny, tiny little bit, that's how much space on the sky this takes. So what they did was they got Hubble to basically look at a tiny little patch in the most boring part of the galaxy. So they just looked straight up, for example. Nice dark place, no stars, nothing to contaminate it, and just keep looking. Look for a long time, then build it all together. 
And this is what you see. Each one of these dots, every single dot in here, is a galaxy. A galaxy just like our own. Some bigger, some smaller, basically just a whole zoo of galaxies. And you've got, in this picture, about 3,000 galaxies, all the way back to the very beginning of time, as far as we can see. And if we take a little zoom in on this, you get this sort of thing. So you get these spiral galaxies. All this beautiful complexity coming out of something so simple. Just simple matter, space and time, put them together, simple equation to govern it all. So that just blew me away. This sort of one would be roughly what our Milky Way would look like, for example. A nice, normal spiral galaxy. So if we have a look at this guy here, for example, these are a couple of galaxies interacting. So this is, this is a different picture. This is the Antennae Galaxy, which is 45 million light years away. So it's a bit of a walk. It takes a while to get there. You can't really ride your bike, sadly. Um, so what we have here is two galaxies smashing into each other. Now, as someone who likes basically things colliding and lots of explosions and things like that, this was just too cool. So I couldn't let that go without doing another painting of it. So again, they're crashing together. You can't quite see so much on the screen, but if you've got extremely good eyesight, so you may be able to see the equations up here. If you can't, here they are. <laughs> because there's just not enough oil paintings that have equations in them. <laughs> I, I don't know why this is. this is. I've looked through a whole lot of galleries, went through the Louvre, and I couldn't find a single set of equations in there. I was quite disappointed. But the idea of galaxies colliding is one thing, but all of that complexity, all that beauty, comes from such a simple thing. For those of you who have done Year 12, well, final year high school physics, you may recognise that it's 1 on R squared. This R is just a distance. So you have an R up there, R cubed there, ends up being 1 on R squared. Exactly the same equations that you're taught for, you know, throwing a ball, for example, and it just landing there, uh, govern the motion for stars and galaxies and everything. So it's, again, just this simple concept, simple equations giving rise to such complexity and such beauty. Just, yeah, it continues to blow me away. So, and you get exactly the same equations, and they also govern the, on the smaller scale, the stars, the planets, everything around. This is a, a, an artist's rendition of all the planets that the mission Kepler has found. So this is a recent mission. It's found hundreds, of, possibly even thousands by now, actual planets. A lot of them have yet to be confirmed, so I think the number is about a thousand, outside of our own solar system. So these are all planets around other stars. And this is just putting them all together. So it gives you an idea of just how much diversity there is in the universe, how much beauty, how much complexity there is around the universe. And on one of them, of course, we have us. An extremely, as far as we know, quite unique planet. And brimming with complexity, brimming with beauty. And inside, these are a few examples of um, patterns in nature. So again, you have these very simple underlying laws which give growth to these type of shapes. Right? And then, of course, you've got the most complex thing we've come across, which is us, humans. We're already from a complex world, and we've managed to make this enormous complexity, these human societies, just around us as well. So this is an example of what we look like at night time. This is Europe here. So you've got London up there, Paris over there, Moscow up here. Yeah. And it may seem that this is quite unrelated to space, but actually, it turns out, from last year actually, there was a paper which directly shows that there's an equation called Ziff's Law. It basically shows how much population can get into a particular city and shows the distribution of these cities across there. And it's perfectly predictable by exactly the same processes that actually govern galaxies forming together. So very simple equations and very, very cool. So hopefully I've convinced you a little bit, if not to believe me, that the equations are the most beautiful thing, but at least that they are inherently beautiful and give rise to such amazing complexity around us. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.